was MTV aiming at? They were aiming at the younger children, weren't they? Now, I, rem- I remember in the Bible when Christ was a little boy, it was at the age of 12 that he actually came into the synagogue and be- began discussing all the Bible doctrines. I wonder if it's possible, if it could be, that around that age, around the age of 12 to 15, these artists, and of course Satan knows that if you get the kids at this age, then you can get them, and most likely he can claim them from ever since that age for the rest of their life. So it's interesting just how these big shows aim for the young kids, and even Marilyn Manson knows to, to go for kids around the age of 15 because this is when they're most, they're the most easily taken in that kind of field. Here's another artist, Noel Gallagher. Just like we saw in the whole of the old, olden day music industry, he says, if the devil popped up now and said, it's a choice, musical relationships, be it mother, girlfriend, even Liam, I'd sign on the dotted line. Just another little example of these artists claiming that they've sold their soul. Is, it, is there more to this? Is there actually something behind it, or is this, this just words? Well, so far you've seen so many examples of it, so I'll leave that up to your own speculation. Here is another very popular rock group called Metallica. Now, Metallica, it, it's just amazing how so many of these artists, even back from 20, 30, 40 years ago, are still in the music scene. And as soon as they release a CD, they sell millions and, and they're always so popular. Do you think there could be more behind their fame and fortune than meets the eye? Well, let's just take a quick look at their lyrics and see. Here is one of their songs. And in this song they sing, Angel from below, change my dreams. I want for glory's hour, for wealth's esteem. I wish to sell my soul to be reborn. I wish for earthly riches, don't want no crown of thorns. Now, you can tell from these artists that they know scripture to some extent and they know what they're doing. And all I can, I I actually feel for these people because here he says he doesn't want no crown of thorns and And they don't realize on that day of judgment, when God comes, how much they're going to regret saying this. Whether they just say it for for just popularity's sake or if they're actually into occult and, and spiritualistic kind of stuff. Or if they're just saying it for no reason at all. But the thing is, on that day of judgment, they're going to regret saying these things. Here's some more lyrics. I don't care for heaven, so don't you look for me to cry, and I will burn in hell from the day I die. You have to feel sorry for them. Anyway, we're going to focus on a few mainstream artists, some really big names that have come through the music industry recently. One of these people is Carlos Santana, and I'm sure everyone here has heard of him, and and maybe even heard some of his music before. Carlos Santana has an interesting story as well. You see, Carlos was a famous musician back in the days, back in the 70s and 60s and stuff like that. And he disappeared for a while. Then suddenly in the last five or six years, he just pops back up out of the scene, and the, the first album that he releases again is one of the biggest albums of all time, and it was winner of Album of the Year at the 42nd Grammy Awards. And it just makes you wonder, why do these artists just, especially these artists back from the old days, just keep on popping up and keep on making it successful? That's why we, we need to look deep into some of these people's lives and just have a better look. Now, here, here's just something interesting that I just thought I'd add in. Here's, um, uh, tr- here's the name Santa Claus. And if you, you look at the translation of Santa, it's basically a scrambling of Satan. And then if you look at the name Claus, it's actually the old English word for hoothclaw, aka, other words, a split hoof or a goat. So really, subtly in there, it's Satan the goat. 
Now, I'm not dissing Christmas here or anything, but I'm just using this example to show you the same thing with Carlos Santana's name. Here is um, the translation for his name. If you look at his first name there, Carlos, it actually means strong. And then Santana, if you, you just have a look there, you can see the name Satan hidden in there. So is there a message there that's trying to be subtly given? Maybe who he's really, his, his allegiance is really to? I'll leave that up to your speculation. But Carlos Santana made it successful once again. And here he actually goes on to tell us how about how about he became sec- successful again. He says, I know it sounds new age, but in my meditation, this entity, which is called Metatron, he said, we want to hook you back to the radio airwave frequencies. We want you to reach junior high schools and universities. Once you reach them, because we are going to connect you with the best artists of the day, then we want you to present to them a new menu. Let them know that they are themselves multi-dimensional spirits with enormous possibilities and opportunities. We want you to present them with a new form of existence that transcends religion, politics, or the modus operandi of education today. This country was founded on a Bible in one hand and guns in the other. So isn't that amazing? Here he says that when he was in his meditation... And the story goes like this, he was meditating one day and then suddenly this spirit being just comes to him and starts telling him that he's going to make him famous again, that he's going to plug him back up to the airways and, um, and basically make him popular throughout universities and amongst young people. Here he goes on to say, this entity wanted me to know I would be hooked up with the right writers, musicians, and producers for the purpose of reaching high school and college kids. So my inner instructions were clear. Eric Clapton wanted to know if he could play on the album. All the people who played on the record said they heard my music before I called them, or that I appeared in their dreams or something. They knew what was coming before they got the call. Now this is exactly what happened. Carlos Santana began receiving these meditations from from this entity saying that he was going to hook him back up to the airways. Then suddenly, when he was starting to write his music and get everything together, and they were ready to start filming, he then began calling all these people. And all these people, Eric Clapton for one example, all these people started having dreams, or they started hearing his music in their head, and, and there were just all these really supernatural occurrences that started happening. And it even makes you wonder the title of the album, Supernatural. Here Carlos Santana says, There is an invisible radio that Jimi Hendrix and Coltrane tuned into. And when you go there, you start channeling other music. Have you ever wondered where some of these artists actually get their music from? I was watching this interview one day from um, Carlos Santana. And on, on the interview, this reporter is actually talking to him and asking him, oh, how, how do you go about playing so well? Like, um, you, you have such a vibrant presence on stage. Carlos Santana then goes on to explain. He said that what I basically do is I just loosen myself and I just allow basically the spirit to play me. And um, Carlos Santana said that sometimes he's actually watching himself on his own concerts and video clips and he doesn't even recognize or remember himself playing up there. So my question is, what is really playing him? Where is this music coming from? Does music like this, even music that has a really light influence, it doesn't seem like it's too corrupt or anything like that, is there some kind of secret message that is going in the background that is trying to be preached to everyone? Here Carlos Santana says, You meditate and you got the candles, you got the incense, and you've been chanting, and all of a sudden you hear this voice, write this down. Who do you think that voice is? Well, remember, there are only two parties, God and Satan. And I really don't believe somehow that this is from God. 
Carlos Santana says, When I let the Spirit play me, it's an intense delight. My role 